My name is Griffin Furlong and I am a professional engineer and I am here to show you how to use a program called ICPR. This is ICPR version 4 and it stands for Interconnected Channel and Pond Routing. ICPR is heavily used in Florida to model stormwater. You can use ICPR 4 to develop watershed analysis. You can use it to analyze channel flow, ponds, weirs, pipes, I mean the whole nine yards. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up a storm event, bring in map layers from AutoCAD. We're going to bring in an existing surface from AutoCAD, and we're gonna cut some sections of a channel, create nodes, and run just a little dummy model. In the land development industry, we use ICPR4 to develop our stormwater models. We need to understand the discharge rates of our site, as well as all of the staging. The staging is the, the ponding levels of the ponds and the channels. But I'm gonna quit talking. Let's dive right into it. So the first thing we're gonna do to set up a storm event is we're going to go to this toolbar up here. This is the ICPR interface. You have a lot of fun icons up here, but we're going to learn first about how to just set up a storm. First place you're gonna wanna go to is simulation. Then you're gonna go to simulation manager. This is where we can set up all of our different storm events. Let's go ahead and create a simulation. I'm gonna go down there to this box here, and we're gonna call this 25 year, 24 hour storm. That's gonna be the storm event that we're gonna use in this scenario. Now, you got a couple tabs up here. We have a general tab. This is how long you want this program to run. In this case, instead of just running from zero hours to 24 hours, I'm going to run it to 36. That's typically a preference. So again, with this 25 year, 24 hour storm event, this has a certain amount of rainfall. And in this case, you know, it's a 24 hour duration of the storm, but I want to see what the ponding does after 24 hours. I want to see if it stays in the system or not. You know, that's why you would want to ever change uh, this timing here. You can run it for days if you want to. I'm going to skim through some of these tabs. Here are the output time requirements. In this case, case, what you can do is you can set these time increments to calculate every 15 minutes, five minutes, whatever you want it to do. I really just like to use 15 minutes. You can get a little bit more nitty gritty and do it by five minute increments if you're very interested in a particular timing, but I am actually very okay with using 15 minutes. Now we're going to go to this resources and lookup tables. We will dive into all of these in another video. You do not have to do anything with this if you don't want to. I will say uh, I like to set up different boundary stage sets. Sometimes I might even set up a curve number set, but I think this is a little bit more advanced for this video. Last but not least, this is the bread and butter tolerances and options. I never really touch anything up here. Uh, the main portion that I enter is just right here, the rainfall name, the amount, and the storm duration. Like I said, I was running this storm called the 24 hour, and now we need a rainfall amount. In order to understand your rainfall amount, you can pull this data from your local county or city. I know from my project and our stormwater management handbooks that I need to use eight inches for the 25 year. Now, if you're interested in your project and what the rainfall amount is for your requirements, consult your local jurisdiction. It varies by your location. Last but not least, you can enter in a rainfall name. And instead of just entering in something here, I'm going to show you something. You can right click in the box and do select existing item. We have a lot of different rainfall names. And for this project, this just test model that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use FL mod. This is already set up into this program. And all this is, is a certain rainfall distribution type over our project. And, you know, we can get into the nitty gritty of that into other videos, but we're, we are just about ready. I mean, we got this storm set up. That was quick and painless. So now we're ready to go into the other topic. What I wanna show you guys is you can actually bring in map layers. Here we have a graphic view, and now let's say if you opened up ICPR and you didn't see this, in order to get to mapping, you can go up to the mapping tab and go to graphic view. Then you got this graphic view. Obviously, I'm seeing darkness here. I don't have anything to display. What I wanna start showing are some of the map layers. How can I bring in my AutoCAD line work to understand you know, a reference point? Well, I'm gonna show you that. So here is AutoCAD. I actually uh, sized a 
culvert in the last video if you want to go check out that video i have some layers in here that i want to bring in just to show you how it's done i have some pond top of bank and some normal water level layers i'm going to just isolate these really quick and if you're familiar with autocad you have this isolate button up here i'm going to isolate these layers these polylines isolate that guy so i got this little pond that i'm going to bring in just for a reference to export this line work you're going to want to export as a dxf file think of a dxf file is just like map line work it's really just lines how i usually export is i go up here to the civil 3d tab i go down to export here and i'm going to find dxf Here's DXF. This is very important, okay? You have to select R12. Don't ask me why, but you have to select this in order to import. Let's save our DXF. Now I believe it exported. Now let me go back to ICPR. Now let me show you how to bring this line work into ICPR. Now you go up to the mapping tool up here. We have this thing called Map Layer Manager. In order to create a new map layer, you can do this plus symbol. We're going to give this map layer a name. We can call it base, pond, maybe I'll call it pond to be specific because that's the pond line work that I'm bringing in. Now this is really, really important, okay? So we made this map layer manager, and if I were to just you know, quickly go to import DXF, that wouldn't be the right move here. Make sure that you click this, this layer and have it highlighted blue and then hit import DXF. That's very, very important. Now that I have that selected, now it's asking me to find that DXF or shape file. And now it's going to ask me to select the different layers. I really want the pond water edge, so I'll import that guy. Pond top of bank for the hell of it. Yeah, and you can also change these colors. So I'm gonna make this blue for the pond and I'll keep it green for the top of bank and let me find that pond top of bank. I'll select that layer and import. Now I'm cooking with fire, guys. You've just learned how to bring in map layers. Now let's go look at them. So in order to go look at them, make sure you're in graphic view and you have this little tree over here. If you go to this plus symbol for map layers, I can turn on my pond and my pond top of bank. So perfect. Now we have some layers to actually work with in ICPR. All right, last but not least, I want to bring in the existing grade of this site. And in order to do that, you will have to export a civil 3D surface, which we do have in here. And just to show you guys what I'm working with, I'm gonna change the style right here to contours. Just to show you that I have an existing grade to work with, that is what I got. In order to export your surface, you're going to want to right click this existing surface here and we're going to want to export to DEM file. We get this dialog box, make sure you are using the right coordinates. All of this looks fine to me. TIFF is what we're going to bring in into ICPR. So I'm going to hit save. Now this will take quite a bit and I'm going to skip through this process and I'll see you out on the other it's side. Like 30 minutes, I had enough time to eat my dinner, take a nap, but now we are here. This surface has exported. Let me go to ICPR where we will bring this in. Now in order to bring in a surface from AutoCAD, you're going to want to go up to here to the surfaces tab. Let's go to Surface Manager. Let's hit this plus icon, and we're going to call this Existing Grade. Let's press OK, and we're gonna go down here to Import. What it's gonna do is ask me for the file location. I'm gonna go to the file location and import it in here. Surface Generation Complete. Oh man, looks like we got two in here. Uh, I think I skipped a step, but now in order to actually see your surface, we're going to go to this raster here down at the bottom. You got a raster tab and do you see these different trees? I'm going to go to my surface. I believe this one that I created was actually, you know, false. I'm going to go ahead and, and choose this guy and voila, we have now imported our existing surface into here. This is awesome. Now we can start cooking with fire. So I've walked through how to set up a storm, how to bring in map layers, how to bring in an existing grade. If you know this basic information, you can bring in a lot of stuff in here. You can bring in your whole site. You can develop different ponds. I mean, you can, you can go really crazy here. Now, the last thing that I'm going to show is just how to set up some simple nodes and a simple channel. And we're going to hit run on this model off site here. 
we had a little ditch. I'm going to actually just show you how we can model this ditch. Now, in order to set this up, the first thing that I will do is I'm going to place a node. Now, in order to set up a channel, you will need two nodes because a link connects two nodes. Think of a node as a storage unit. In this case, all of the storage will be in the channel link, but I think we're just gonna get there when we get there. So in order to place a node, you can go up here, go up to your graphic view, and you have some different options. I wanna do a node stage area. Then do you see these little icons here? You can either do create 1D graphic element or place, well, we haven't made anything yet, so let's go ahead and create. So I hit that button, and now it's going to ask me to pick a point. I'm just gonna go right there. Now, it's obviously really, really small, and in order to make those bigger, we can go to Preferences, we can do the Graphic Element Properties Manager here, and I wanna make these just a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make that 20. Okay, perfect, now those nodes are big. I'm also gonna make this link channel 10. So let me go ahead and, and create another node because we're trying to model this channel right here. So now that I have my two nodes, I'm going to do a link channel. So it's going to ask me to link channel and I'm going to go to create 1D graphic element again. And you see as I hover over these nodes, it, it asks me if I want to connect. Now, once you have your node selected, you can just do auto draw. And do you see how it just auto drew that line directly where my channel was, which is awesome. I have two nodes with a channel in between. And if I double click that element right there, this blue channel, you can now see that I have some link channel data that I can add to this program. Here's one of the most important things. You can either manually enter a channel cross section or you can create cross sections from your existing surface, which is what I want to show you. I want to take a cross section of this channel. So let's go to cross section channel and do create 1D graphic element. And I'm going to take a cross section from this guy over to the road area. It's gonna ask me again if I wanna have more points. I am good, so I'm just gonna press enter. And now I have a cross section. Obviously you can't really see it because I need to thicken the lines, but we've just made a cross section. Now I'm going to make one more. So now since I have two cross sections over top of this channel, ICPR is very smart and it makes it easy for us to associate these cross sections to a channel link. Let me show you what I am talking about. So if we go back to this general tab here, we can go, I wanna associate a cross section you know, to those cross sections that we just made. I'm going to right click this channel and I'm going to do generate cross section data. Now it's gonna ask me to select the cross sections that I want to use. I'm gonna go ahead and click that one, or what's easier is, so it's gonna ask me what cross sections I wanna select. I'm gonna do this guy, and it's gonna ask me for a surface. Well, I knew that I made this existing surface, and it looks like you know it wants to ask me some default Manning's in. I, I don't really care about the Manning's in for, for this purpose. Let's do okay. Now a cross section was generated. We have now cut a cross section of this channel. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other guy. We're gonna generate this cross section and we're gonna be cooking with fire, guys. We are so close to running this model, it's insane. Got our cross sections, now what? One thing I don't want you guys to forget, our channel, even though we made cross sections, Nothing is associated to this channel. Inverts, the cross sections, nothing. You can be really, really slow and manually enter this in and do select existing item and enter those in. Or I'm gonna show you a fun way. You can go to this graphic elements tab. You can go to channel, right click. You can assign cross sections. Now it's gonna ask you which ones to select. And since ICPR is smart, it knows that those cross sections are hovering over that channel. So once I select my channel, voila. Look how, how fast that was. Now, this is extremely important because when you have these massive models, you can actually just create a whole window of all the channels that you created, and you can instantly create this model. It's almost instantaneous. Now, I noticed that our inverts aren't set. Now, in order to set the inverts, you can do the same thing. We're up here in this graphic elements toolbar here. We're gonna right click this channel, and we're gonna do set invert elevations. Now, it asks to select the channel. We're gonna select that channel. Now, now, what is our invert option? Do we wanna do the low spot on the cross section or ground at node? In this case, I'm just gonna do the lowest spot on the cross section. Voila, we now have our channel and our nodes, guys. I am going to enter in a little basin here. 
Uh, I'm not gonna do any calculations because I really just want this thing to run. Let's find a little basin. So I'm gonna do a simple basin. It's gonna ask which node I wanna assign this basin to. Select center point. There's my basin. Let me double click this guy and I need to enter something in here. So this is my basin ditch basin. Now it definitely needs a time of concentration, an area and curve number. So time of concentration, I'm gonna do 15 minutes. And for area, I guess I'm gonna do an acre. Keep in mind your units are down here on this uh, bottom left. And now I need a curve number. This curve number, 85, I'm not gonna do any calculations here. Uh, now we need a unit hydrograph. I forgot to tell you guys about that. Now in order to select a unit hydrograph, we can right click in here, select this existing item, understand your local jurisdiction and your peaking factors and everything. I think we're ready to run this model. And in order to run the model, you can go up to your simulation and let's do a simulation execution. Now I have my scenario here and we're going to do the 25 year, 24 hour. Let's press OK. Let's cross our fingers and let's hope this thing runs. Oh, it's running. But you know, you don't have any crazy errors if this thing starts running. This was the fastest model I've ever run. You know, when we have these very large 700 acre sites, I mean, these models can take an hour to run. Okay, it looks like we have four warnings, which I knew that we would. You always get a little warning here and there. So let's uh, let's check out what kind of warnings we got. In order to find the warning, you can go back up to your simulation manager and you can go down here to warnings. Let's check out some of these. So we got the warning dialog pop up and I knew I would get these, I always get these. So zero Manning's end was adjusted to 0 0.045. So that's actually the default set for here. And then stage area node initial stage is less than the minimum elevation for storage. Yeah, so that's that's a common one that you might get. Uh, we didn't set an initial stage of that stage area node, which typically, you know, you need to set it. Uh, and let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. Again, I, I set these nodes and typically you need to set in initial stage, which all that means is whatever trying to whatever kind of model you're trying to run, this is where you want water to start. So you if you have a relatively dry ditch and you want to examine the dry condition, you know, when it when it fills up with water, you can leave this set to zero and it'll default the initial stage to the lowest point of this cross section. Now if you think water is going to be in here, you can enter in, you know, an initial stage in here and, and run it. Now we are down to the bottom of the ninth inning. We set up a storm, we brought in map layers, we brought in existing grade, we cut cross sections, we created nodes, we did a lot here, and we even ran a model. Let me show you guys how to analyze the staging of this ditch. So you can go up here to the reports tab. We can drop down to nodes. I really wanna see the max. The max is the maximum of this program. Maximum staging, the maximum flow. Let's figure out what we got going on here. I really wanna see the scenario, the simulation. Yeah, I wanna see the node name. Maximum stage, of course. Maybe even the time to maximum stage. Yeah, definitely maximum inflow rate and maximum outflow. Make sure your simulations are checked. I'm gonna check these nodes here, and then I'm gonna to go to view report. So, what do we got here? What are these nodes staging up to? These nodes are staging up all the way to 9.88. Okay, 9.88. So what was the maximum inflow rate? So based on that basin that we used, we're getting roughly 3.61 CFS to, to that node there. Outflow, obviously one of the nodes has zero outflow because we haven't set any boundary stages or any nodes downstream where it can actually outfall. So I, I would expect this to, to have zero. But this is really cool, guys. Let me show you a couple of other things that you can look at. You can also look at charts if you wanted to see maximum stage. And let's view the chart. Here's some little hydrographs of, of time versus stage. And, you know, that storm was going, was going. This ditch was filling up, filling up, filling up. And then it reached a peak. It's not outfalling. So I never expect this to actually, you know, start drawing back down, as we call it. So this is a cool little chart that you can check. Well, that is about all I have for today. I hope you guys learned a good lesson on ICPR4 and a little bit of AutoCAD. It's a great program for identifying staging and discharge rates. Appreciate everyone for tuning in. If you want to learn more, feel free to hit the subscribe button. I will be making plenty more videos on ICPR, and in later videos, I might even make some on StormCAD. Also, feel free to comment below and let me know what type of topics you guys are interested in. I hope everyone has a good day, and I will see you in the next video.